Hello fellow weavers. My name is Donald and I'm producing a my own version of a rigid heddle loom. If you be unboxing this loom, you'll first find the Ashford heddle uh, 10 dents per inch that I'm uh, supplying with it. Here you'll see the warp and fabric beams and lower spacers. These are all interchangeable and identical. Uh, here you have the fabric and warp rollers with the ratchets and handles on the end. Those two there are the ratchet uh, retainers. Then I have a right and a left uh, side frames and a package of hardware. And that's what you'll find in here other than the uh, instruction book that will also go with it. So let's get started putting this thing together. The larger end there, that's the back of the loom, or will be towards the back of the loom. There I'm showing the uh, double, he double heddle blocks that I've designed for for my loom. These will be standard on all my looms. And so if you, or when you get to the point of wanting to use double heddles, you're all set and ready to go. You just have to order another heddle from Asia. This the uh, hardware. These are about, I think they're two and a half inch uh, bolts. They're large flat headed bolts with an Allen head on it. Uh, an Allen wrench is included in the package. And this is how it will be assembled. There's also two 1 8 inch dowels there. Those will lock the uh, fabric and uh, warp beams in place to keep them from coming out. Okay, then yeah, I've got some uh, little round cylinders. These are uh, bolt or barrel nuts is what I call them. Uh, put them in the hole with a slot vertical as I'm showing it here or parallel with the bolt. Drop the bolt in and using the enclosed, enclosed Allen wrench, uh, tighten them up. Everything should be interchangeable here, and uh, there'll be four on each side, two bottom beams, and the warp and fabric beam. Here, if they're not, if when you put in, if they're not turned the right direction, uh, the use a screwdriver to adjust and get them turned right. Just be careful when you are inserting them that the slotted end stays to the outside. Okay, then we're going to uh, insert the fabric roller here. And I was just showing that check and kind of make sure that you've got the ratchet going the right direction, that you've got the right beam to the front. These could be reversible to a right or left hand loom. You could put them in from the left side, but if so, the what I'm showing here as the fabric beam or fabric roller, it would actually be the warp roller if you do it on the left hand. So be sure that you check and see that the teeth on the ratchet are pointing the right direction. They should point top towards the center of the loom. And you'll kind of, I, I, I would hope that this won't be confusing. When you put it in, if it doesn't ratchet right, take it back apart and, and uh, put the other roller in. But this should be okay. Here I'm installing the ratchet uh, pawl. And this is, will be done with a screw it's, it goes in a pre-drilled -ho, pre hole in the pawl and a pre-drilled hole in the side frames so that these should fit 
the way they're supposed to fit. They, you can't hardly go wrong here. Do not tighten the screw. That's you, you need a little bit of up or down play there. Or the the pole should be free to flop because the the weight of the back of the pole there will be enough to cause it to ratchet. And lifting the back of the pole will release it so that you can uh, release the fabric off there. And here I'm inserting the other, the this would be the warp uh, roller and the warp uh, and the ratchet retainer there. Okay, again, it's a pre-drilled hole into a pre-drilled hole in the side frame. So this should go very well. And once you've put these in, kind of test your ratchet and make sure that it's, it is locking good. The flat side of this ratchet is the top side of the ratchet. The beveled side will be on the bottom side. And that's the way it should fit into the a ratchet on the uh, okay. roller. Okay. And that should basically have the the rigid heddle uh, 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 assembled. The uh, front or back. Okay. The ratchet, uh, the heddle blocks, I've already assembled it and and uh, glued in place as I have the ratchet and the handles here. Those are all glued in place. Right here, you're showing it. I'm showing it as a left hand. No, that would be a right hand assembly because that's the back. Okay. What I'm doing here, I'm using a, a large needle with a short piece of string on it running it through the holes in the rollers in order to feed the... Uh... Okay, here I'm showing you how to put on the uh, apron strings or leash, rod, leash straps, whatever we want to call them. Uh, I'm using a large needle and thread. Uh, worked well for me. <coughs> Get, get a, find a large needle and thread, come in th through the small end of the hole of the roller to the larger end. Then loop it through the uh, apron string, back through the hole in the roller, remove your needle and thread, from the uh, apron string, and then just advance the string through with the so the knot that I've secured in that uh, apron string. It's I it's a nylon string, and I've sealed it with a uh, lighter, kind of melted it together so it can't come untied, uh, and just kind of bury that knot down into the hole of the. Uh, roller. So again, using your th needle and thread, come in from the small end through the roller, through the loop of the a uh, apron string, back through the roller, draw your apron string through the roller, removing your needle and thread, and then advance, go ahead and pull the apron string in until the knot uh, kind of is hidden by the large end of that hole. Coming back through there. Remove the needle and thread, set it aside, pull the apron string, line it up, find the, find the knot there, and make sure it's at the end, 
and then just advance the apron string in so that the knot disappears into the hole there. And so I'm going right there. Pulls in pretty flush. Shouldn't affect your weaving at all. Okay, now throwing the apron strings over the top of the apron um, or the fabric beam. Now we're going to attach the rods to the apron strings. And this is just as simple as just doing a, a little loop there and running this the uh, rod through it. And you can, however you handle the strings, up to you, but here's what you're after. It's that little loop right there. I hope you can see that. I'm going to repeat it a time or two here so you can, I think, make out what I'm doing. And when you get all four of them on, there'll be four front and four for the uh, warp. Uh, yeah. This is, a, I'm working on the fabric end right now, the front. But there'll also be four that you'll do on the back side for the warp. It's just, just make a little loop there. Put your stick in. Now even them up a little bit. And you will be ready to start tying your warp onto it. Right there. And there you're the uh, Heddle, again, it's an Ashford 10 dent heddle that I'm supplying with it. Um, it'll have the, where it's sitting right there, there's a neutral position, then there'll be a high and a low. And the way I've designed it from the beam on the front and the back beam straight across, will go right through the center of the heddles. So heddle holes, it'll be nice and flat right there. If you go underneath, the shed should be right at the top of the uh, heddle, or they're coming to the top, the strings will be right at the bottom. So you'll, you should have a real nice shed. Okay, here I'm showing my version of a uh, warping post. Uh, there's no screws, no anything. It doesn't have to be secured tightly to your table. But just uh, slide it apart, straddle the uh, table with it, and then squeeze it together. And it should, should work quite well for you. Uh, again, it doesn't have to be clamped on to a table. It just just has to sit back there tight enough that your threads can be warped onto it. Thank you.